Good morning and welcome to worship. Today is a little different day for us. We have worship outdoors today scheduled at 1030 with Grace Chinese Lutheran and with Mount Sai Lutheran. And so as such, we are still recording a service to go out online so that those who find us in this way still have the opportunity to worship with us. Uh, a little bit unique today, there will not be a children's message, nor will there be an opportunity for communion. Um, we will be gathering with those outdoors on our field of faith. I am thankful you've joined us. I am thankful you have found us. And I pray that this service will be a blessing to you. Uh, as we begin, we begin as we always do. We begin with a word of confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Let's go. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading this morning is going to be our New Testament reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 and 15 through 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them those who are being tortured as though you yourself are being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, for God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess this holy name. And do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading this morning comes from the book of St. Luke, the 14th chapter. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guest chose the place of honor, he told them this parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by the host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lower place. No, when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. When you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. My family and I just returned from a long car trip down to Southern California and back. And when given the choice, that is how I will always travel. I enjoy the visuals. I enjoy the sights. I enjoy stopping for lunch on the side of the road. But I noticed this time, for some strange reason, along the way, we passed church after church after church, Christians of every stripe and every letter, each of them working to share of the gospel, each of them working to grow the kingdom of God. And yet I wonder when I watched and drove past them, I wonder as I looked at those churches about how they hear and understand the text we have for this week, how it comes across differently. Um, 
there's a quote by Ivo, Ivo Andich, he's a 1920s Nobel laureate, um, who always said, who said it, uh, he thought it was symbolic that the clocks on the mosques and the churches in Sarajevo were at odds when striking on the hour. What I hear is him saying, each of us has our own way we believe that the clock strikes, that, that, that there is the right time or the right perspective. Each just exclusive enough to believe that the other is wrong. What does the gospel text then say when the gospel invites us to a place of welcome and embrace? What does that New Testament text read to us as, as we encounter this space that we are not in control of, but in which God sends us neighbors and relatives and friends and those that me, we may not want to be on this journey today. And that gospel and New Testament text, they carry a very similar message. That message sounds like this. Your judgment and dismissal of others devastates the visible kingdom of God on earth. Let me say that again as this plane flies overhead. Your judgment and dismissal of others devastates the visible kingdom of God on earth. The kingdom of God on earth is visible when, when the worldly pecking order of status and power are gone and undone. The kingdom is visible where hospitality is extended, where mutual love is shared, and where the vulnerable are protected. When we live like this, when we choose this way to live out the kingdom of God, that's where we entertain angels, according to the book of Hebrews. That's where we live out love for neighbor and love for the other. In the kingdom of God, human judgment carries no weight. Worth is not judged by your capacity. If this were true, Poverty, dependence, and vulnerability would all be signs of incompetence or immorality, but they are not. Jesus will not, God will not, the Bible will not allow us this simple dismissal of others. We, in texts like we read today, are called to radical inclusivity. We are called to love our neighbor, to make space for them without judgment we are called to make space we are called to look past the all too human markers of status the visible tangible symbols of power and we're called to look past them in order that we might see the image of god in them in our neighbor our neighbor the one who faces challenges and struggles which you do not know you may have walked similar roads. You may have felt similar ways, but you do not know their journey if you haven't walked their road and everyone's walk is unique. We do not get to judge. We do not get that place. We only are called to that spot of mutual love and hospitality and embrace of the other who is not us in order to experience the presence of God. There's a song by a group called 10th Avenue North that includes these lyrics. It says, you are more than the choices that you've made. You are more than the sum of your past mistakes. You are more than the problems you create. You've been remade. Because this is not about what you've done, but what's been done for you. This is not about where you've been, but where your brokenness brings you to. This is not about what you feel, but what God felt to forgive you and what God felt to make you loved. We are called to live out this kingdom, to live as followers of Jesus, as disciples. Miroslav Volf, who I have delved into this week and I'm celebrating that author, if you have time, I encourage you to look into him. Um, writes, to claim the comfort of the crucified while rejecting his way is to advocate not only cheap grace, but a deceitful theology. 
Let me say that again. To claim the comfort of the crucified while rejecting his way is to advocate not only cheap grace, but deceitful theology. Our text today calls us to a theology, an ideology that lifts up the downcast, the vulnerable, the wounded, those we often, in pursuit of worldly status or worldly understanding, get set aside. The text today calls us to a way of seeing and engaging the world that reflects God's love for us and for them. What gets in the way more than anything else is the world's view of those we deem unworthy, those our human judgment dismisses. God will not let us do this. Not if we are going to follow. You are worth more than that to God. So is the one you dismiss. You are worth the life of the very one who serves the banquet at the end of time. So is the one we dismiss. You have been saved, not by God's, not by your worth, not by anything other than God's love. And we are called then to embrace the world in similar fashion, to embrace the one we call other. Because once we discover the will to embrace the other, once we move past that worldly will to separate, to own, to disconnect, once we discover the will to embrace that other, we can do nothing else. Because that's what God has done for us. That's living the way of the crucified. Because of this, we as people of faith, we as the church are called to a couple of very specific things and they would be in the eyes of the world errors. We are called to err on the side of inclusion. We are called to err on the side of welcome. We are, we are called to err on the side of embrace. And we are called to do this so that everyone may know the love of God that is with them always, present, hopefully, and especially through God's servants on earth, you who are the church. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, and may you follow in a place of embrace. Amen.
Let us pray. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Gracious God, for the church and leaders, we pray. Uphold deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people wherever they may be. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for ethnic origin or religious belief. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained, and comfort all who are sick or grieving in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this congregation and its ministries, we pray. Prepare children, teachers, and youth ministry directors for a new year of learning. Embolden our witness to invite others to the table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the saints who confessed God's name, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Just a couple of notes on our ministry together this week on what is coming. This this evening, this Sunday evening, the 28th, we have our final Theology Around the Fire, Faith on Fire event, and we invite you, if you wish to join us, to email uh, one of the pastors, and we will be sure to get you the address that comes with that. Uh, We are hoping to continue doing Faith on Fire throughout the year, um, having one pub theology a month and one Faith on Fire at the homes around fires with a good conversation. So we look forward to doing that. Uh, In the next few weeks, we we will be celebrating Rally Day. We will have an opportunity to gather and bless backpacks, and we will have a special speaker and an adult forum on uh, on that second to the last Sunday in September, so watch for more information about that as it comes out. Um, the invitation this week in the midst of our work together is to live out this embrace, this welcome, this call to be disciples who take the way of the crucified. May you be a visible witness to that. Um, and a reminder that though we don't have a way to take uh, offering and to, to worship God with our offering on, on this format, we do encourage you to go to our website or to download the mobile app of the church and from there to click on the, uh, the electronic giving options that are available to support the ministry of this congregation as we seek to be the visible witness, the visible presence of the kingdom of God on earth. It happens only through you. It happens only in this place because you decided to release for the ministry of God the gifts that God has given you. And we are thankful for that ministry. Let us listen to music as we worship God with the offering that we bring.
now receive the benediction. May the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of this day always. Amen. Now go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Amen.